Welcome back to Fox Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain the movie, The Villagers, released in the year 2018. At the beginning of the film, we see a high school girl named Han Su Yan walking down a bridge in the middle of the night. She nervously gets into a car with someone and drives away. The scene changes to Gi Chol, a middle-aged boxing coach. He walks into a restaurant with a trophy that his student was awarded for being the first runner-up in a match. It turns out that he was supposed to win the competition, but a corrupt official made the opponent win for money. Gi Chol is short-tempered, he doesn't tolerate when people are unfair to his students. When the official tries arguing with him, he throws hands and knocks him out with a single punch. However, the man turns out to be the vice president of the boxing association, who has the authority to ban Gi Chol from coaching. Gi Chol's sister is furious because this isn't the first time he's been kicked out of an organization for fighting. After pulling some strings, she finds him a job as a gym teacher in the ruler side of the city. In the following scene, he's driving to the town when the car gets a flat tire. While waiting for a tow truck to arrive, he notices a missing poster on a notice board. The girl in the picture is the high school girl, Su Yan, who we saw at the beginning of the film. Someone has written a message on it making fun of the disappearance. Gi Chol thinks it's disgusting and tries to erase the text, but only makes it worse. On reaching the town, he sees three high school girls bullying someone. The victim is Yu Jin, the missing girl's best friend who is mad at the bullies for drawing on her posters. When she confronts them, the bullies claim that they did not do it, but it's evident that they do not want Su Yan to return. Gi Chol tries to separate them, but the girls in turn ask him to mind his own business. Following that, he meets his former student and a police officer, Dong Su. He welcomes Gi Chol into the town and shows him around. Then, we see Yu Jin go to Su Yang's home to meet her grandmother. It is revealed that Su Yan's only family is her grandmother, who is worried to death about her disappearance. She and Yu Jin are also the only ones who are actively trying to find Su Yan, while the police barely work on the case. Yu Jin goes to the rooftop and reminisces about her time with Su Yan. She suddenly remembers that Su Yan used to work part time at a club. On doing some digging, she gets her hands on the club's card and decides to go there to investigate. The next day is Gi Chol's first day at work. The principal introduces him to his colleagues and stations him beside the art teacher named Ji Sung. Alongside being the gym teacher, he's also assigned as the student dean. The principal tasks him to collect lunch fees from the students. Gi Chol asks them for money during the lunch break, but none of the girls oblige to do as told. He finds Yu Jin on the way, but she also dismisses him. A while later, Gi Chol notices her jumping over the wall and skipping school. He follows behind her to the market, but gets distracted by a claw machine. For the first time in his life, Gi Chol wins a stuffed toy and is overjoyed. Somewhere else, Yu Jin sees an election campaign being held for a powerful politician named Mr. Kim. Unbeknownst to most of the public, he's a corrupt and evil man. She ignores the campaign and goes to the club where Su Yan used to work. She asks people around if they've seen Su Yan, but doesn't get a definite answer. The club owners threaten her to get out and are about to get handsy when Gi Chol arrives and rescues her. He also advises her to stay out of the case since the police must be working on it. Later that night, he drops her off at home and returns back to his apartment. When Yu Jin is alone, a stranger follows behind her and tries to abduct her. Somewhere else, Gi Chol notices that she's left her cell phone in the car and goes back to return it. He comes across the kidnapper who runs away on seeing that he's about to be caught. Gi Chol brings Yu Jin to the hospital and makes an official complaint to the police. However, when the police chief is told that Yu Jin is Su Yan's friend, he tries to dismiss the case. It's almost as if he's trying to hide something about Su Yan's disappearance. Later, Gi Chol talks to his police friend Dong Su about Su Yan's case and discovers the police haven't even filed it officially yet. They think that she's a runaway who went to some city to avoid responsibilities. Gi Chol knows that it cannot be true and makes it his mission to find out what exactly happened to Su Yan. He goes to her home and meets her grandmother. If she writes a formal letter to the police station and signs a consent form, the police will have no way but to file a missing report. The plan works and Dong Su files the case for them. Gi Chol also does some digging about the case around the school. He's told that Su Yan was the worst student they ever had. 
She used to be absent for half of the year and was considered a lunatic. The teachers suggest he stay out of her case for his own good. Eugene hears them talk about her friend and is furious. She pulls Gi Chol aside, insisting that everyone is lying to him to hide the real cause of Su Yan's disappearance. Gi Chol doesn't know who's telling the truth. Before leaving, Yu Jin asks him what he would have done if Su Yan was his daughter. The question clears his thinking, making him register that even if Su Yan is a runaway, she needs to be found. Following that, Gi Chol finds a bunch of girls smoking in the bathroom. He looks around for the packets of cigarettes, but instead finds a hidden camera in one of the stalls. He immediately goes to the principal to inform him of the situation. The principal doesn't give him a chance to talk and wants him to stay out of Su Yan's case. The comment makes Gi Chol not want to tell him about the camera. Hence, he brings it back and looks at its content himself. It turns out that the camera was set by the art teacher, Ji Sung, who happens to be stationed right by his desk. Gi Chol goes to call him out for being a pervert, but finds out that he's already left for home. Taking the opportunity, he goes through Ji Sung's laptop and is surprised to see text messages between him and Su Yan. The night she went missing, she had texted him to pick her up from the bridge. It is evident that he knows something about the case. Gi Chol immediately calls his police friend, but he doesn't pick up. Then, he calls Yu Jin and asks her where she is. She turns out to be in a car with Ji Sung, who offered to take her home. Gi Chol secretly tells her everything he found about Ji Sung and asks her to be careful. She cleverly makes Ji Sung tell her where they're going and texts the location to Gi Chol so he could find her easily. Then, she notices that Ji Sung's keyring looks similar to the one Su Yan used to own. She asks him about her but is knocked out with a punch. When she opens her eyes, she's on his bedroom floor, tied and gagged. She sees that Ji Sung has Su Yan's phone in a cupboard. Before he can do her any harm, Gi Chol arrives and forcefully breaks into the house. Ji Sung tries to stop him but is unsuccessful against the former national boxing champion. He is punched to the floor and tied. He begs Gi Chol to not report him because his career would be over. But Gi Chol doesn't care. He asks the pervert about Su Yan but he claims to know nothing about her disappearance. According to him, Su Yan called him to pick her up from the club that night. He was driving her home when she got a call from someone else and asked to be left at the gas pump. She said someone else was coming to get her, so Ji Sung drove home without thinking much of it. A few minutes later, he felt uncomfortable leaving a girl alone at night, but when he returned to get her, she was already missing. He found her phone on the road and kept it. Other than that, he claims to know nothing. Soon, Ji Sung is thrown in jail for his misbehavior, but the police chief still refuses to believe that Su Yan was kidnapped. Even when Gi Chol insists they should work on the case harder, he dismisses the conversation. After Gi Chol leaves, we see the chief calling someone and asking them to be careful. This proves that there is someone else involved in the kidnapping and the chief is helping them. At school, the principal calls Gi Chol to his office and fires him for taking too much interest in Su Yan's case. It is clear to Gi Chol that everyone in the town is trying to hide what happened to her. Before he can think of the next move, his police friend Dong Su calls him to a location immediately. On arriving, Gi Chol sees Su Yan's dead body being escorted into an ambulance. Yu Jin breaks down crying at the death of her dearest friend. Gi Chol understands that the killers must be targeting Yu Jin as well, because she is the biggest threat for them at the moment. They go to the hospital to meet Su Yan's grandmother who is sick. Her condition gets worse when she is informed of her granddaughter's death. Somewhere else, Dong Su overhears his superiors talking and discovers that the chief is taking money from someone to keep the case hidden. He decides to do his own investigation and steals Su Yan's phone that was found earlier. After repairing it and going through the text, he sees that Su Yan had talked to a woman from the club named Isul. He informs Gi Chol about the lady, but right after the call, someone knocks him out from behind. Gi Chol then goes to the bar and meets the lady. On being insisted, she reveals that Su Yan used to be a part-time singer at the club. The night she disappeared, the politician Mr. Kim, the bar's chairman, and the police inspector had gathered at the club. While she was performing, she got a call from the hospital saying that her grandmother was sick. She asked the chairman for permission, but he started to misbehave with her. Eventually, she ran away while being pursued by the bar's owner. Isul doesn't know what happened to her after that. 
The bar owner and his men attack Gi Chol, but he manages to fight them all. When only the owner is left, he asks the man why he killed Su Yan. Scared, the man admits that he followed Su Yan that night, but he was not responsible for her death. In fact, he found her in a public bathroom being strangled to death. The person who killed her was none other than Ji Sung. He is Mr. Kim's son and is not scared of anyone because of his father's influence. He was in love with Su Yan, and when she denied his advances, he killed her. After finding this out, an enraged Gi Chul calls Dong Su and discovers that Ji Sung has already been released from the police station. This means Yu Jin's life is also in danger. When she doesn't pick up her phone, he immediately rushes to Ji Sung's house. Somewhere else, Ji Sung finds Yu Jin and abducts her to another location, but stops when his father arrives at the house. Not wanting Mr. Kim to know he kidnapped Yu Jin, he locks her inside a closet before receiving him. Mr. Kim is furious because of all the problems his son has caused. He orders Ji Sung to go to the US and never return. In turn, Ji Sung accuses him of killing Su Yan. It is then revealed that Kim was called to the public bathroom to take care of the matter, but he found out that Su Yan was still alive. To save his reputation, he killed her, finishing what his son started. After he leaves, Yu Jin attacks Ji Sung and manages to run outside, but he doesn't take long before catching up to her. He is seconds away from killing her when Gi Chul barges in and attacks him. After beating him to a pulp, he brings Yu Jin to the hospital because she is severely injured. Somewhere else, Mr. Kim wins the election and is elected as the town's governor. He is now stronger than ever. Gi Chul sees the news on TV and is filled with anger. He drives his car to the highway and hits the car that Mr. Kim is in. After knocking out the driver, he walks to the politician who is shaking in fear by now. He tries to intimidate Gi Chul, asking him if he knows who he is, but Gi Chul could not care less about his status. The next morning, the truth about Kim and the police inspector makes it to the national news. They are arrested for Su Yan's murder. In the last scene, Gi Chul visits Eugene at the hospital and leaves her the stuffed toy he won at the claw machine. He then moves to another city, hoping to start a new life. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.